Let's talk about this potential merger in Jujutsu Kaisen. What the heck is it? What is the plan? Just in general, what's going on? But before we do, gotta give a quick spoiler warning. If you're not caught up on the manga, we'll see you in the next one. So to put it really simply, the merger is Kenjaku's brainchild, his life's work. He's literally spent the past 1,000 years getting all of the chess pieces in play to pull off this move. And what it boils down to is the idea of merging Tengen with Japan, basically all of Japan's non-sorcerers. Because Kenjaku, at least what he tells us, is that he just wants to see what's going to happen. He's fascinated. Kenjaku's motivations beyond just satisfying his own curiosity is to create a new form of cursed energy. He really wants to see what the evolution of this is going to be. And he spent the past 1,000 years experimenting in this regard, right? Even creating the cursed womb death paintings. But he was very disappointed with them, right? Saying, you are all too ordinary. And as he tells us at the end of Shibuya, what Kenjaku came to realize was that his creations were limited by him, right? He couldn't create anything grander than himself. And so that's what ultimately led to this idea with Tengen merging with all of Japan in order to see like just what that would create. Hopefully it would be the next step of evolution of Cursed Energy. And that's pretty much the merger in a nutshell. Obviously, orchestrating this and actually setting it all up over the past 1,000 years was very complicated and nuanced. But the end goal is just to create whatever is going to be created from the merger of Tengen and humanity. And if we're to take Kenjaku at face value, he's just doing this for the love of the game. You know, comparing himself to a kid with a crayon in front of a blank piece of paper. Now... I don't disbelieve that. I do think earnestly that Kenjaku does just kind of want to see what's going to happen. But I do believe that there is more motivation beyond that that we just aren't privy to. And this gets a little bit more complicated because Kenjaku is seemingly gone now. Um, I'm not fully convinced that Kenjaku is completely gone that there may be some remnant of at least his influence, if not literally coming back in another body somehow, mostly because it seemed so unsatisfying and he seemed so unbothered by dying right before this comes to fruition after spending literally multiple lifetimes setting it up, right? And maybe he's just chill like that, right? But I just have inklings that maybe we haven't seen the last of him in some form. Anyway, all that being said is I feel like there could be another shoe to drop with exactly what his motivations were, but we're going to have to see. All right, with that overview out of the way, I want to address some questions that I've gotten about the merger. And first up here, we've got Metal Saurus who says, what if the end game is Yuji eating Sukuna to take out the merger? And he kind of comments on how that would be ironic due to the fact that Sukuna's whole thing is eating and loves to eat and has even been hinted at that he will eat an important character. So what if he was actually eaten by Yuji? Um, so I really love that idea. Uh, for me personally, though, I would tweak it a little bit. And instead of Yuji, you know, eating Sukuna to take out the merger, I could see Yuji eating the merger to deal with Sukuna. Now, not necessarily literally eating the merger, although maybe because we don't exactly know what this merger is going to look like. That big menacing, you know, skyscraper sized demon from the last panel was just what Kenjaku was imagining. The merger may not look like that at all. It could be a humanoid for all we know. Um, but I could see Yuji potentially being the vessel for the merger or have some role to play specifically with the merger and maybe whatever the outcome of that is, is like the final battle with Sukuna. Because I'm not convinced that Yuji's role was simply just to be Sukuna's vessel. Uh, Kenjaku says that, you know, Yuji is a vessel, but maybe he's the vessel for the merger. Again, Kenjaku's been planning this for a thousand years. And like I said, I feel like there's more that we don't know. I could easily see Yuji being a part of this plan still. And maybe his true vessel role was never to be a cage for Sukuna. Or maybe that, maybe that was part of it, right? But the truest role was to be this merger, or excuse me, vessel for the merger. Now, what does that mean? I don't necessarily know. Does it mean Yuji would like retain his consciousness and his agency and just get a power up? Or would it mean Yuji would completely dis disappear, but he's just a necessary cog, you know, to use the language from the series itself to make this happen? You know, maybe in the same way um, the incarnated sorcerers kind of erased their original humans they took over, maybe the merger will do that to Yuji. Um, or at least, you know, maybe that was Kenjaku's plan, at least. I don't know. There's so many interesting questions, right? But I I'm yapping here. But my point is, I would, I could see this type of scenario, but I just think it would be tweaked in, in the 
in the way I just said, where Yuji would do something with the merger to fight Sukuna instead of the other way around. Next up, we got a couple of questions from Surope. Feel free to pause and read the whole thing if you guys would like, but the first half of this question is basically discussing what I was just yapping about. So I'm gonna spare you guys from repeating that, but yeah, I'm right there with you. I think it's definitely possible and plausible that Kenjaku had some higher designs in mind regarding Yuji that we haven't seen come to fruition yet. So especially with this merger looming, I think we could potentially find out more. Now, maybe there were no other plans. Maybe he just was Sukuna's vessel and he played his role, but a lot of signs point to there being more going on. And for anybody that wants more context, the video that um, Sorope references here is, does Yuji have a heavenly restriction? I put that out a few days ago, so check that out if you're interested. Uh, but the second question is, do I think the dimensional slash would be able to cut Sukuna's fingers? Um, and my instinct says yes, uh, just because the way the dimensional slash works, as I understand it, is that it literally cuts existence itself, right? As if it were a higher dimensional cut. Uh, so with that being the case, that goes through infinity. So it seemingly would also go through whatever protection, whatever durability the fingers have. And I made a video on the fingers recently as well, but I presume that there is a binding vow at play that makes the fingers indestructible. But I think the dimensional slash would cut through that, in my opinion. Um, now, would cutting the finger effectively do anything to it? You know, because it's not as if, <laughs> it's not like it's Gojo where cutting it in half is going to kill it. They're not alive in the first place, right? So I do think it would work, but you might just have 40 Sukuna fingers at that point you know what I mean but I don't know so interesting nuance but to answer your actual question yes I think the slash would cut them next up we've got this question from shattered glass who asks do I think there's a chance that Megami will be the one to activate the merger without Sukuna so Megami of his own accord deciding to start that and I think it's possible because like you mentioned Kenjaku made the rule that passed the authority to start the merger to Megami. Now he did that because Sukuna is in Megami's body. So I don't think there was any like intentionality on Kenjaku's part to like give that authority to literally Megami. It was about giving it to Sukuna. But I do think this is possible. I made a video talking about um, how Yuji and Megami are kind of like this narrative mirror to Gojo and Geto when they were younger. And we know that Geto, you know, kind of turned away and went to the dark side and Gojo was unable to save him, if you will. I think there could be an interesting parallel that plays out here. We know Megami is at his lowest. He has given up. Will Yuji be able to save him? Could Yuji succeed where Gojo failed? Um, so I think the interesting, like, what if on the other side of that is what if Megami is too far gone and maybe even if Sukuna is dealt with or whatever... Megami just having lost all hope just starts the merger himself you know maybe he's like nothing else to live for like you know maybe he just does it where the story is right now I don't see that making sense because even if he has given up on life he shouldn't want to like harm the rest of his friends I would say but you know we don't know what's going to happen over the rest of the chapters maybe something does happen where Megami does reach that point anyway I'm starting to yap again but absolutely I feel like you know Gege kind of put the pins on the board to set that up as a possibility. So I do think it's possible, but I don't think it's necessarily going to happen. I think it could very well be that just Sukuna ends up doing it. Our next question comes from Kaizo Kumar, and he is talking about how in order to start the merger, the culling game has to end. And for the culling game to end, all of the players have to die except for a couple. Everyone except for Megami, aka Sukuna, Geto, aka Kenjaku, even though that ship's kind of sailed, and Shiorihimi, who is Udaume's vessel. So everyone except them has to die for the culling game to end. So if this merger is going to happen, that means our entire cast is going to pass away. So what does that mean, right? So me personally, I think this merger is going to happen. Like, I think it's too big of a Chekhov's gun. It's been too big of a setup for it to just not happen and the story ends. So does that mean the whole cast is going to die? Well, they're already falling like flies. So I think yes, but there could be some weird loopholes around it. Like, you know, maybe if you die for one second in which everyone has taken grievous injuries that they healed back from. So like maybe there's some weird loophole there or otherwise. But yes, I think the merger is going to happen. So I think... In one way or another, a lot of people are going to die, but maybe they come back from that somehow. And finally, I want to shout out both Andrew and Clinton for these questions about Yuji. Like I mentioned earlier, I recently put out a video on Yuji and his potential heavenly restriction, and I cover both of these things in that video. So I'm going to link it down in the pinned comments for you guys to check out. But thank you so much, and thank you to everyone who made this video possible. I will see you all in the next one.